Okay, guys, um, just continuing on with this uh, mix, um, I've got the speakers on now. Um, just so I can hear it on speakers. Um, the next part of the mix, once you've kind of got your basics done, your, your kind of all that procedural stuff that I was doing in the previous video, uh, you can then, you need to take a break, right? Don't keep mixing, 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 mixing. The things that I was doing, that I was doing in this first part of the mix was, you know, I was putting gates on, compression, things like that, and setting up basic EQ curves and things, but all the time on headphones. Um, and now you want to take a nice break, and then you come back to it and you listen and you make little tweaks. You don't go in and go tweak, tweak, tweak this, tweak that track, tweak this track, tweak that, and then listen. You listen and you make a little tweak and you listen again and a good idea at this point is to put the speakers up a little bit and not like mega loud um, unless you've got a very very well acoustically treated room but just put the speakers up a bit and listen to the track while you're making a sandwich or something yeah like listen to it as if you're casually you're not focusing like sitting right between the speakers focusing really rah, I'm focusing on the mix but you're listening to the song as if it was on the radio in the background you're kind of paying attention to it uh, often it's really good to listen to it you know walk out of the room and listen to it coming through the door and you start to notice things you know oh the hi-hat is a little bit or the snare's a little bit loud or the guitars could be louder and you come back in and you'll go right okay the guitars are a little low I'll just raise them up a bit you raise them up a dB or two and then listen again. You don't like just tweak, tweak, tweak. Yeah? Just do little tweaks and listen and let the song kind of wash over you and you start to notice more things about it. So I've got the speakers on now, which are going to be picked up by this microphone. So I'll do some editing to cut that out. And I'll, let me just have a quick listen uh, to it on speakers. This is the first time I've heard it on speakers. I'll just lower the speakers down a bit. Okay, now it's got more bass on than it should have and that I pretty much knew was going to happen because I was mixing on headphones so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the kick and I'm going to reduce that bump on the kick take that bass down on the kick I'm not even going to listen to what that sounds like I'm just going to reduce it as a, as a principle and then I've got the two uh, bases, remember they're being fed to a uh, submix here. So that bass submix, I'll try dipping that down just a couple of dB. And then I'm going to lower the fader down a couple of dB. Now let's listen to that. The thing is, you don't want your kick to be too loud. I'm going to tighten that kick up, the bass part of that kick. You don't want your kick drum to be too loud. I'm going to put that to 100 hertz. If the kick's too loud, it starts to ruin the rhythm, the drive of the song. If the kick is way too loud, yes, you hear it, but it starts to take away the groove, right? So the, the kick wants to be not too loud, um, so it's kind of pushing the groove along, but it's not so loud, it's dominating the groove, and then it, it takes away the rest of the vibe, uh, the, the rest of the groove. Just drop that bass a smidge more. Okay, I've got our compressed drum mix there, the really heavily compressed drum mix. So just by lowering the kick and lowering the bass, it's straight away giving it more balance okay now I've got that compressed submix of the drums here let's solo that and listen to it let's drop the kick out of that submix a little bit so there's less kick in that submix less compressed kick in the parallel drum mix it's mostly the uh, it's more the snare with Next loudest is the overheads, and less kick, so we're not overloading the kick. Oh, 
on this compressed submix, I'm actually going to give it a little bit of EQ boost at the top end, just to make it brighter. Right, let's hear that now. Drop the overheads a little bit, just a bit. A little bit less of the small reverb on the snare, and I'm going to drop the snare just a smidge. A little, a little less kick in the parallel mix, just drop that send a little bit. Now the toms, can lower those down a smidge. Let's see that tom fill again there. Now the guitars, a little bit more. We're dipping out the 1K there. But here, this 2.5K, I'm going to tighten that right up. Give it a little bit of boost there to get some edge, a bit more edge on the top end of those guitars. And drop that. Um, I've got a little bit of warmth on the guitar there. I'm going to drop that down a bit. Lead guitar, a little bit louder. Dipping the snare down a little bit more now. Now the lead vocal. Raise that up a little bit. A little bit. And where is the vocal? Get that delay a little bit lower on the vocal. A bit too much echo. Just want it really subtle that. And we're trying to and we generally want to balance the vocal about the same loudness as the snare drum. That is the basic tweaks. So I've just balanced. I've basically lowered the bass end on the kick, lowered the bass end on the bass, and dropped the bass and the kick down a bit. That inst I mean, only just like one to two dB, a little tiny bit. A little bit of bass reduction, one or two dB of bass reduction, and one dB uh, roughly of reduction on the level. And that has just dropped the bass end down enough to bring the guitars back in, and then I've just slightly brightened the guitars raise the vocal a tiny bit and, and, and now it's sounding more like the right overall balance and now I would listen to it and just make the odd tweak here, the odd tweak there. Just a smidge more guitars. Um, they're at minus 1.5 so I'm going to put them up to Minus one, just point five of dB. Let's hear that.
Okay, a little bit more bass. That's it. That'll do me. There's the basis of my mix. And then what I do now is I'd lower the level and play it while I'm just making a sandwich. You know, and just listen, kind of listen in the background. And I might make the odd tweak extra. Two things to remember. Nobody will mix the same song twice. So when you're learning mixing, the first thing you have to understand is there are principles, but don't ever think there's such a thing as the correct mix and the wrong mix, right? If you got 10 of the world's top producer engineers and gave them this song to mix, they'd all mix it differently. The overall tonal balance would be roughly the same, and the overall balance of the instruments would be roughly the same, but no two engineers are going to mix this the same. So there's no such thing as the correct mix that you're trying to achieve and an incorrect mix, which if you do it wrong, it's incorrect. There are things you can do that are wrong, but, you know, don't get it fall into this beginner's trap of thinking there is an absolutely correct mix and anyone who's experienced will always make the same mix because they've got experience. It doesn't work like that. It's it's quite a personal thing mixing, right? Um, like I've made the guitars a little bit scooped out in the mids to give them more grind. Other other people mixing might give them more mid range. You know what I mean? So never think that there's, there's an absolute correct way. Don't overdo it. Don't go on and on and on and on and on because there's an uh, there's an old saying. You know, a mix is never finished. It's only abandoned. Um, <laughs> there's no point just. Tweaking, 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 tweaking for its own sake. A good song won't need that much mixing. A bad song where you don't really feel the song, you're not feeling the song, often that can drive people to just keep, well, if only I did this, if only I could make it sound a bit better. But it's really the arrangement of the song and the production and the writing that's at fault. It just hasn't got it. A good song mixes itself pretty much, yeah. And, when, and by that I mean the bits that are in there are every everything in the song is doing something relevant. It's not just overloaded with extra tracks doing subtle things that you're not really that are not really making any difference to the mix that have been put in there just to like well it's not really doing it for me. Perhaps if I add this or that it'll make it better. You know everything needs to be doing something very specific in a mix, and that way you don't really need so many tracks. And that's another of the the art of arranging producing a track is making sure that everything in that tr in the song is doing something relevant that adds to it right not just adding stuff for the sake of adding more tracks right anyway there you go that's my basic mix um and i'd go through i'd say and do a little bit more tweaking on this probably but there it is that'll do let's have a listen through
That's a nice song, actually. I like it. One last final thing. Um, if you wanted to, you could let the ending just go like that. But there, you might look like it just stops. Everything just stops there. But um, if we zoom in and look at the end, um, we need to let's just get these lined up so they all end exactly the same, so we don't get one track cutting out and and then another one cutting out just after it. Let's have a listen to that. Okay, so some of the guitars are cutting out here and there. So one thing you could do with this is go in for the final little thing. I mean, it, there's maybe a little bit more tweaks I do. You noticed, as I was listening to that, I slightly raised the kick, slightly dropped the snare, slightly raised the bass, slightly dropped the vocal, and I mean by a tiny amount. But what you could do, just to get the end tidy, is um, get this final master stereo track, right click on it, create a track for it. Right, now this is, alt left click on the main fader, it should be at zero. And I should have a track now, um, on here for the final output. Um, hmm, track. Show output track, okay. There it is. So on the final output track here, we've got the main fader at zero, starting at the beginning of the song all the way through. So what I would do is, with this final track, go to the track automation, um, put this on volume, and there you've got um, nothing. Okay, but the fader is at zero. Look, zero dB, right? Zero dB. So right at the end, where it does, the guitars are fading out, um, I'll put in a line like that. Just click here, it'll make a line. And that line is at 0 dB all the way. And then at the end I'll put a node and then just fade it out at the end. So at the end, as the guitars are dying away, it'll fade out. Let's listen to that and just see. Like that. And you get a little bit of a tidier ending. I mean, that's optional. You might want it to sound more punk, scrappy, it ends on the guitar's just cutting out, okay? But you could do that. Yeah, you could do that. Um, let's uh, get rid of all the track automation on this track. Mix, delete automation. There's no automation anyway, so get rid of it. And then hide that track hide output track. Okay, so that's an option you could do just to make the end drop out nice and tidy. In the old days I put a noise gate across the whole mix and I um, set the, the noise gate with a very very you know a slow um, release and at the end it would just close down. Alright, there you go. I hope that's useful.